Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to take a look at some of your best practices for writing C Sharp and I'm going to base that off of this very popular Reddit post a few days ago it was posted and the premise is I'm an experienced JavaScript developer who's new to writing C Sharp and I want to know how to best write C Sharp. I feel like I've covered the majority of language features in my notes, however I'm struggling with the amount of features in the language very fair point by the way, the language can feel very overwhelming and many features overlap previous features and sort of make them obsolete. So the person would like to know which ones to use over the others, for example constructor versus object initializing and so on. For example, in the case of JavaScript you have conventions such as prefer const to let and var and prefer triple equals to double equals. It has to do with how equality checks work in JavaScript behind the scenes. It would be great to understand similar C sharp ones if possible. Now in general C sharp does not have this type of conventions you should prefer. C sharp conventions I feel like is more about a standard of how we initialize properties, of how we name properties or fields or constants and so on, but let's see what you have to say. So the C sharp design ethos is one of non-ambiguousness. In other words, when writing code, try to ensure that it's clear what's going on to the reader. I would argue this is any programming language, I don't think anyone writes code in an ambiguous way, however the more old school languages you check, the more you understand that people use very weird variable names. In C sharp I would say we're pretty good at this. Let's take var for instance, which is a very big point of debate as well, we recently had another one of those var versus should you write the entire type name and var is substituted for the actual type compile time, at runtime it is given what the type actually is, when reading the code it should be 100% clear to what the type is. So var my var, bad var name, new string builder. I don't agree with this, not because of the new string builder but because of the my var. This should also be named according to what that string builder is supposed to represent. It is not just any string builder, it is an HTML builder, it is an XML file builder, it is something string builder. So give it a name. So I would argue it is ambiguous and it's a bad example. Then you have var my var get lost. This get lost could also be non-ambiguous depending on the context of where this is used. For example, if you use a local get last method of a class called students, then you're probably getting the last student in that collection. But again, name my var correctly. You can't just name it by var and use that as an example. Another tip is don't hard code literal values in your C sharp code. For example, if count more than four. Yeah, I mean, this can be extracted as a check. So you can say that if, and then use the method named as what this is supposed to represent. You would never have a name like this in C sharp. This is more of a Java thing where you have everything capital and then all the words are separated by the underscore. Usually you would use a Pascal case in C sharp for max retries. So M capital X and then R capital E tries. So you wouldn't have something like that. But overall the idea behind that comment is fair. Then there's a pointer to framework design guidelines by Microsoft. In case you haven't seen this, Microsoft has written about the guidelines on exceptions, on naming, on types, and for example, if we go in naming, uh, things like naming of namespaces, naming of time, name of parameters, all that is written down and fairly up to date. It was updated last in uh, 2023. So these are to be trusted, but Microsoft is writing those from the perspective of a library developer, not so much from the everyday person. Now, do those things apply to an everyday person? Sure, they do apply. You don't have to write the BCL to have to follow them. But I think understanding why they're used and why you should follow them is equally as important as following them. Now before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called From Zero to Hero Messaging in .NET with Mass Transit. And it is an amazing six and a half hour course by Rina Skurtu, who will teach you everything you need to know about queues, pub sub, messages, but also show you how you can use it with Mass Transit, which is the most popular library for doing messaging in .NET by far. Messaging exists in basically every single application. And if you join a company, 
it is very, very likely they will be using mass transit. So you must know both concepts very, very well. And Irina won't only teach you the basics, but she will also go into very, very advanced production ready patterns, such as the Outbox pattern, the Saga pattern, and so on. The concept in the library is a must know for every single developer. And to celebrate the launch, the first 400 of you can use discount code TRANSIT20 at checkout to get 20% off. Now back to the video. Now this comment again tries to cater to the first point of this post, which is const var and let. We don't really have the let keyword in C sharp except for link. In link, you can use let to allocate a variable whose value can change. And then you have const, but not in the same way as JavaScript and var. And C sharp does have the var keyword, but it's more of an implicitly defined type rather than the way var works uh, in JavaScript. Now in C sharp, you can do this, but you can also use a dynamic keyword. Please don't. Dynamic keyword is a bad keyword, uh, but you can to sort of give the same experience as what var would give you in JavaScript. Then I really like this comment, which I actually want to make a video at some point about because many people get it wrong. And I've seen so many people make this mistake, especially when they try to make mappers or mapping methods, which is by convention, two methods. So two list, two array, two dictionary. They create a new collection. They allocate, they don't reuse the collection you're passing in the method they create a new one, while the as methods, as span, as read only, and so on, these methods reuse existing collections, and they're more like casting than reallocation. Many, many people do this wrong, and it's a point I really want to talk about more in depth with examples, because it can really harm your code base, because we make some assumption based on the name, in the same way that if you see a try something method, that method is expected to return a boolean and have an out parameter for the thing you're trying to convert from one thing to the other. So for example, to list and to array, they both create new collections, but as span will create a span over an existing collection, same with as read only, and same with many, many other methods. And when you need to do something with a collection, list array and so on, start by asking which link method should I use? And that's what I do as well. I always start with link. And then if I really, 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 really work on something extremely performance critical, then I consider deconstructing the link query to its raw components to gain the most performance I can. But given how many performance improvements link has gained, at this point, I'm just using link in most scenarios. And I'm really not ashamed of it. Using link is extremely productive in like 99.9% .9 of situations. Then dynamic keyword, you should really not use it. It shouldn't even be a last resort. You can do most things or everything that dynamic can do without using dynamic. I've never seen clean code using dynamic or comprehensive code using dynamic. For me, it's a red flag. Don't use it. And then embrace nullable reference type notation. Null reference exceptions are by far the most common type of exception. So if you can handle null correctly, you should. I agree so much with this comment, incredible feedback. And I think it's underrated that it should be voted higher in my opinion, because those are way more applicable tips than the previous ones I have seen that tried to sort of use what the original post said and explain why they're not really applicable in C sharp. It is a different language. Each keyword does not mean the same in every language. It shouldn't be thought like that. And then again, modern C sharp, turn on nullable check if possible. So, so true. If you are not using the nullable feature in C sharp, leave a comment down below and let me know why. Because in every single one of my projects, not only do I use an nullable reference type feature, but those warnings are configured to be errors because you're going to end up with way more robust code if you're using nullable reference types in your code base. It's been out for so many years now, since C sharp 8 and every project should be using it. Some people complain because enabling it means that you have to now handle null everywhere, which is sort of the point. If you're not handling null in a place, that's a place null can blow in your face. So you shouldn't complain. The language forces you to write better code and more reliable code. So handle it. Then a controversial one, use link expressions over loops when possible. And then an edit due to, I guess, negative feedback. If you think link expressions decrease performance, then you've either been working on an old version of .NET or you're not writing efficient link expressions. Efficient link expressions can be true. That's why we have a dedicated course on it on DOM train because you can write good link and bad link. However, some operations will just implicitly give you fairly bad performance 
because of potential pitfalls like closures, for example. Now, link can actually make you so much more productive where this might not matter that much. And again, performance is contextual and means different things for different people. For example, if you see this comment over here, it is this is not good advice. Link is great for readability, but it is terrible or it can be terrible for performance. It can be terrible, but loops can be terrible for performance if what you have in the loop is bad. And then edit it again. To clarify my point, I'm not saying don't use link. It's got place like everything. So it depends. And then another one with some other opinions. Personally, I got these use var everywhere always. This is against Microsoft conventions and highly controversial, but I believe types inside functions are important to the reader or to the compiler. For me, var depends. And I'm actually, if you want, I can make a video on that because I have some opinions on it. I am sort of 80, 20, where 80% of the time I'm using var and then 20% of the time I'm not using var when I can't use it or when I shouldn't use it. So I can make a video talking about this. Never use dynamic type. I totally agree with this. I never use it either. Using directives should be on the top of the file outside the namespace brackets. I totally agree with that. In fact, namespace shouldn't even have brackets. It should just be file scoped namespaces. And then you have one class per file. I used to agree with that. And nowadays I don't because of records and so many more things. I now usually have a single class representing a bunch of things, especially with DTOs or contracts. And then I just put my records in there. Or if I have a service or a repository where I might have an interface and implementation combination, I usually put the interface and the class inside the same class file and it's totally fine. That's what I recommend as well. Then another one is use is null instead of equals null for null checks. And that is true. And the reason for that is because double equals can be overloaded in a class. So it will use whatever is in that method. Now, it doesn't mean that if you overload double equals null, you should ever change the behavior of that. However, that is not true for Unity because Unity does overload the equals operators. I think for game objects, which has a significant difference in the behavior of null. So you should not follow that behavior in Unity, but for anything else, you can use is null over double equals null and it's going to be more reliable. It used to be that it was also faster, but it's not faster anymore. And that's about it. Those are all the tips in this post. But now I want to know from you, what are some of your general best practice tips for writing C sharp? Leave a comment down below, let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.